Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Gran Turismo guide and this week I'm going to be guiding you around the time trial at Bathurst in GT3 machinery so if you're new to this, uh, this is a guide for humans to follow for anyone who's not an elite player to try and see how possible it is in order to get a gold and this week we've got a special twist because during filming my steering wheel actually broke or rather the pedals broke due to a spring snapping which is not so good when you're trying to brake so I've had to switch to pad there's a big debate amongst people who use controllers and pads uh, whether or not that is slower than using a steering wheel I'm going to put that debate to bed simply by saying yes it is slower uh, within about uh, 10 laps I managed to get to a 201.9 in the fastest possible car uh, for this challenge which is the uh, the Genesis uh, the Genesis X GT3 uh, I managed to get to a 201.9 and uh, I was improving my time and improving my time when the steering wheel broke um, in fact, actually, my time started getting worse when the steering wheel broke because it took me ages to realise that that's why I wasn't accelerating. Um, but anyway, I had to switch over to pad, and as a result, I have switched car, and it was a struggle to try and get the gold lap time on this with a pad. The problem is that the amount of steering lock that Gran Turismo allows you to have with a pad is less than the steering lock that you're allowed to have with a steering wheel, which means that you can basically turn less. Um... Go out and try that yourself if you've got a steering wheel, go and do some laps, put hard lock on around a fast corner and see how much grip you've got and then do the same on a pad and you'll realise that you understeer wide. So um, there are some things that are easier on a pad like throttle control I find quite easy with the shoulder buttons on the pad but anyway I'm going on a bit too much, we'll get onto the video in a second but before we do I'm just going to rank a couple of cars just quickly because I've tried about a dozen or so of the cars so far and the Porsche is the best. Uh, I found this really easy to beat the gold. It took me about six attempts with the Porsche, um, whereas other cars just couldn't get close. Um, so some other cars that you might want to try, the Mercedes AMG GT3 was quite good, really easy to drive. And also the uh, Nissan R34 GTR, really nice to drive as well. Uh, it's a car from a different era. Uh, it was a bit twitchy, but it had oodles of grip, so quite a nice car, just a bit more difficult to drive. Also worth a shout is the uh, BMW Z4 GT3, a car that not many people will have really driven much. But it's a nice neutral car and easy to get into the hang of. But I'm going to show you the Porsche, and the Porsche has got a secret weapon on this course, which is weight transfer. This is a course with a lot of up and down hills, and having the engine in the back actually makes this car very easy to drive, although maybe not the fastest car when pushed to the limit, but it is still a fun and easy car to drive for a beginner like myself. So we're going to switch over, I think, to this view because this is the view that I've been using for Bathurst because it really helps you avoid the barriers. And I'm going to play the lap and enjoy. I will pause it at key moments so that you can see what I'm doing. Now here we go. So we're coming off the end of the last lap. So just trying to get over the line with as much speed as possible to start the next lap. And here we go. So the first braking point is just after that shadow just there. Uh, it's not quite on that shadow, but just as soon as you pass that shadow down there uh, to the right of the screen, you want to start braking. And brake down to second gear, hook this inside, but don't get on the accelerator straight away. You see that I've only got half my accelerator on there. And I, even now, I'm still only on like three quarters. I'm not fully on the accelerator. Uh, I am running with traction control off, by the way. You really need to. And you see now I'm on full accelerator. And the thing that you're looking for is there's a bump over here. Um, if I can just look back, there's a horrible little bump just to the right as we're looking at it. So you want to have cleared that bump before you even consider putting full accelerator on. It will be slightly slower because you put accelerator on later in the corner but you will pick up the time down the straight by having smooth acceleration. 
So we've got a really long straight now. Uh, it's time to go and make a cup of tea, uh, pick your nose and so on. Think of some rude jokes. Sorry for the twitching camera, by the way. Um, and I'll just say, uh, as a benchmark time here, uh, 19 seconds and lower is good for gold. Um, if you're at 19 and a half or something like that, you're never going to make up the time over the rest of the lap. So really practice this first bit until you can get, get down to sort of 19 seconds or like 18 and 18.7, uh, I think is the optimum that I had through there uh, in this car. Your next braking point uh, is the end of this little piece of tarmac on the left. So it's not the 50 board, it's just um, where that strip of tarmac ends. And you see there, now it all happened very quickly, but I went down into third gear. But you see here that I'm not on full brake. You need to be half on the brake in order to get the car to turn in. And you see there, I'm just now rolling the accelerator. I'm jabbing at it, actually, because the car was still fighting me and understeering there. Now you want to sort of kamikaze across this. I, uh, I actually eased off. And the trick here is you want to try and get the car to oversteer so that you can point it into this left. So you can see that I went all the way out to the edge of the track and then managed to get the car all across in one smooth line. Next bit's nice and easy, nice and flat. Now, if you're feeling brave, you can take this flat, but I don't think you really can, because it all depends on you getting the turn in exactly right. Uh, so what I recommend here is just a gentle little lift, but the key here is turn in. You want to be aiming to touch this rumble strip on the inside. You see how close I get to this? Look how close I am. Let's just go off board. That is how close I get to it, and that is what you need to aim for. Aim to hit it, and you shouldn't hit it. You know, if you let the understeer avoid, uh, avoid the barrier, then, you know, you should get the line right. Uh, and if you're nice and tight to the inside, then this one up here isn't really a problem. Let's switch back to the view that I used. Next corner, so you just need to align the car up uh, as close to the wall as possible here. So again, look how close I am to the wall here. And you're aiming for that rumble strip. Get two wheels all the way on that rumble strip. Um, I am lifting ever so slightly. No braking, just a slight lift, just until I feel that the car can make it. And then full throttle and up into fifth gear. Next corner, right. Now there's a little bobble in this corner and it's where that bobble is that you want to simultaneously lift off and turn in. So you see there, there was, you see the car just bobble ever so slightly, and I let off the accelerator and launched it at this section of rumble strip here. Okay, as soon as I felt like the car could make it round, I was full on the accelerator again. Now for, I think, the most difficult series of corners to really master. This is probably where I'm losing all the time. But as soon as you go under the shine, ease off. Just ease off, don't break. And then as you get further into the corner, just moderate the brake carefully. Hug the inside there. Aim as close as you can to this inside barrier. I left a fair bit to play with there. And then you want to try and get the car as sort of over this piece of grass here as possible. Short shift, manage the power, and then let it run down the hill. There was a bit more speed for me to find there. Uh, I've kind of gone past that corner there, but you just want to let the car drift around it. And then you want to get the car turned in nice and early for this corner. Hug the inside. Right, this is where the weight transfer of the Porsche 911 really helps. So you want to try and get the car into this Falcon sign on the left and follow it in and then gently accelerate out. Again, I think I lost a couple of tenths there. Um, my best time on this could easily be a 2010 if I really wanted to. Uh, but I mean, this took like a dozen attempts and I'm losing patience at this stage. And I'm also six tenths up on my best at this point. So um, anyway, nice and flat out. And then you're braking actually um, just on the S of this barrier here. So that's what I've been using as my guide is I use the letter S there to brake 
down to third gear and you want to, I mean I didn't quite nail this, you want to uh, get your wheels in between that white paint and the rumble strip. If you hit the rumble strip you'll oversteer and you'll have to gather the car up and you'll lose loads of time. So you want to just try and get your wheels in between that little gap. Wasn't perfect this lap but you don't have to be to get the gold. Okay, that's the whole point of this demo is to show you that you can get a gold without being perfect. So the final corner, um, so where I'm braking for this, it's kind of hard to spot a braking marker, but I'm using the um, the red and white rumble strips on the left there. Uh, and as soon as I draw level with those two, that's when I brake. And then I'm on the brakes and just feed it in. So don't be braking or accelerating here. You just let the car roll in. And then as soon as you feel like it's got enough grip, just slowly, slowly on the accelerator, nice and smoothly, and over the line. And there you go. That was a time good enough, 2.01.448. I'm going to play the lap at full speed and from the chase camera now, just so that you can see what it looks like at full speed. And take a look at how close I am getting to some of those barriers. commentate as I go so on that uh, shadow and then moderate your throttle you want to be really late on the throttle there uh, because otherwise you spin the wheels on that bump aiming for a time less than 19 seconds down here to be on for gold braking where that pavement strip is and moderate the brake just there and then full throttle all the way out I've run it over that strip there because I'm playing dangerous with my chances you want to get the car right out to that outside and then hook it back in and you see that I kept my minimum speed up there at all times all right keep your minimum speed up feed it in as close to the barrier as you can again as close to the barrier as you can on the way in close to the barrier on the way out and on that bubble feed it in admire the view and this this is just a case of playing it by ear car control this is where I lost some time here because that was quite a slow exit there I had to catch a sideways car and I lost a bit of time here as well because I couldn't quite get on the power there because of that barrier on the exit nice long straight again Make a cup of tea, pick your nose, think of some dirty jokes. And braking on the S. There you go, there's the S. And you see there, I was slightly wide, which then compromised my apex there. So, not a perfect lap, but good enough for gold. So I hope this gives you confidence that you can get gold if you just do a lap a bit like this. There we go, we are across the line, and that was it. You can see there, 2.8% with respect to the world record and 6,000th in the world. So it is doable with a pad. Um, if anyone doesn't believe that was with a pad, I've no idea how I prove it, but um, hopefully, maybe next week we'll be back with a, with a wheel. I'm not sure. Uh, it might take quite a long time to get the wheel fixed. So tune in next week for another video, possibly with a pad, possibly with a wheel. We'll find out. So until then, have a good time and good luck getting gold.